Hi, so in the previous videos we've been looking at the sectors of this R&D Roma model and now we can tie it all together in this video by looking at the labour and goods markets to see what our actual results are for the aggregate economy. So we can start by noting something that we've used in the previous derivations that we have some labour force for the whole economy L and this is split into our two economies which have workers so we have workers in the R&D sector LA and workers in the final goods sector LY and what we know about the wage in the final goods sector so WY is that it is equal to the marginal product of labor because it's a perfectly competitive labor market there so we can just use this first order condition from the profit maximization problem in the final goods sector here and we can then substitute in for y to get, put this in a form that we are maybe more used to and we see that the wage in the final goods sector is equal to 1 minus alpha multiplied by y over the labor in the final goods sector and equally we can find the wage in the R&D sector, which we'll call WA, which is equal to our delta bar multiplied by the price of a patent. And again, this is just coming from the sort of marginal productivity of labor. And we know that the output in this industry is, well, is patents, and the patents are the things that are being sold to the intermediate goods sector. So the productivity of labor is going to be given by this sort of technological progress. And we had that ADOP was equal to delta bar multiplied by a number of things. And we, we, we can see that our delta bar is also depending on a number of things. But OK, this is, this is our wage in the R&D sector. And we also found that the price of a patent in the previous video was equal to the profits from it over R minus N. So we can just substitute that in and we get that our wage is a function of this parameter delta bar and our profits, our rental rate of capital and our population growth rate. What we now need to note is that in our economy, our, the fact that we have competitive labor markets means that the wages have to be equal in both sectors otherwise everyone's just going to choose to work in one sector if if the wages in the final goods sector are much higher than the wages in the R&D sector or even slightly higher everyone's going to choose to work in the final goods sector because it's higher wages we don't have anything like that says and that people prefer to work for any other reason other than just monetary return, their wages. So we need to have that these wages are equal for this economy to make any sense. So we can set these two wages, which we've got at the top of the screen, equal to each other. And then also what we've done is substituted in for this profit function that we derived in the intermediate goods sector video. And so the, these conditions have to hold that our wages have to be equal in both in in both sectors and we've just used our wages from each sector here and what we can do is just a number of manipulations so here we've got that these two expressions are equal to each other and we can just rearrange to get this in a nicer form and that's what I continue to do and we can just get A on its own in, in terms of parameters and the labor force in the final goods sector. So we just sort of divided through by Y, divided this one minus alpha term and then just rearranged and we get this expression. And beyond this, we can recall that this is what I was referring to before when we were thinking about marginal productivity of labor, that we have A dot for an individual is equal to delta bar multiplied by the labor force in the R&D sector. So from this, we can get what our growth rate in A is. Our growth rates are just A dot over A, and this is equal to delta bar LA over A. And then we can substitute in for this A that we found here using our wage equality condition, we might call it. And we can substitute in for this slightly more complicated exp expression in terms of LA and LY and some parameters. And what we can actually note as well is that by rearranging 
so we can divide through by certain terms we can we can cancel out these delta bars and then times through this alpha and times through this 1 over r minus n and then we get that this is equal to the labor force in the R&D sector divided by the labor force in the uh, final goods sector and what we've done here is noted that this is equal to AL over 1 minus AL and re recall that AL is just referring to the fraction of workers who are in the R&D sector so what what we had is that our workers in A was equal to just AL multiplied by the whole labor force and by extension from the fact that LA plus LY is equal to 1 we have that 1 minus AL multiplied by L is equal to LY and we can just substitute this condition in for LY and substitute this one in for LA and we get out this result here that this is equal to AL over 1 minus AL and so what we have we have this condition is equal to this condition and so we can multiply across this 1 minus AL to this side and this is what we have here and we can then just solve for AL so we we'd expand out this bracket to get that GA well we just expand this out so we get and plus or oh no not plus it would be a minus minus uh, al ga alpha over r minus n and then we can add this across to that side take out the al and then divide through everything that's in this common bracket and, and what we get is this term we we find what al is just with some simple rearranging i won't go through all of it because that's fairly simple and then just to further maybe simplify this a bit more we can just divide through by ga multiplied by alpha over r minus n because we have that term on the top and the bottom and then we get this al term just in terms of our parameters and our growth rates and this this is what we were looking for in the aggregate this is what our share of the workforce in the r d sector is so if we have say a higher in returns capital r we're going to have a lower share of cap share of workers in the in the R&D sector if we have if we increase this n we're going to increase al and because this is coming in negatively in the denominator and perhaps the key result here is that an increase in the growth rate of a is going to give us an increase in the share of workers that are in the R&D sector and this is something that's important for us because when we think of the Roma R&D model, if we have a higher fraction of workers in the R&D sector, we're going to have a higher growth rate in our economy because we're getting more ideas and these ideas are giving us our endogenous growth. So th this is a, an important result. And so understanding what the fraction of workers in the R&D sector in equilibrium is, is very important to this model. And what we can do beyond this is we can look at goods market equilibrium, which our goods market will remember is just that Y equals C plus I. We have a closed economy with no government. And we have this capital accumulation equation that we've seen in the solo model and beyond. And we can substitute in for Y here using our uh, production function, which we've done here. And we can make turn this into per capita values using the long process we have done in the past by dividing through by l and then uh, using the quotient rule to substitute in for this k dot over l or this k dot over al depending on what we do and we we can use this to find what our steady state value is or what our balanced growth path value of k tilde so here we're doing k tilde so we would divide through by al and so the evolution of this k tilde over time is given by this equation and we can find that our k tilde in steady state is given by this k tilde star and this is this is very similar to the results we've had in the solo growth model but we are very importantly dependent on the fraction of the labor force that's in the r d sector so the 
number of workers in R&D is going to directly impact the capital stock in steady states of this economy. So that, that is our aggregate level and from our K tilde star we can then very simply work out what our Y tilde star is, what our output per effective worker or output per capita is and so on because our economy is governed by this capital stock in steady state. So that will wrap up the Roma growth model or the Roma R&D model. So please do leave a like if this was at all useful. Do check out the playlist for future solo growth model and the likes videos and subscribe for some economics in your subscription feed.